photographer and, uh, and I work with Moving Image as well and Hex. Um, and at the moment, I was a visiting lecturer in the UK, but right now I'm um, uh, a lecturer in Sweden, in uh, Academia in Barland in Gothenburg. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the two projects that I'm showing um, in the exhibition. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about two new pieces of work that I've made since. Um, so, if, I guess in relation to this exhibition, um, my work deals with histories, and I always start from my own personal history, and then I relate that to kind of other histories. Uh, those can be other personal histories of my relatives or my family, or it could be global histories uh, of conflict, of displacement, of migration. migration. So um, I use myself a lot in my work, um, I'm kind of building up the self-portrait, I suppose, and I use a lot of my closest family in my work. Um, and I think the reason why I started working with myself was because I was studying photography and I wanted to take a self-portrait. And my teacher said, if you're going to work with, with yourself, you have to think about what you represent. You're A, you're a woman, and you're B, Asian. And so I realised from that point that I couldn't make work with my face, or what this face represents, without talking about the issues of, um, of being mixed in, in a kind of white Western society, and what that means in terms of representation. Um, so, my personal conflict, I suppose, in, in history is that I had multiple belongings. My father came to Europe from Sri Lanka, he was Tamil and my mother is Danish. I was born and grew up in Sweden and then I lived in the UK for 19 years. And I don't fit in, into any kind of boxes that people want to place me in. So I arrive in Sweden and they speak English with me and I arrive in Sri Lanka and they call me white. And I'm interested in looking at what, what these positions mean and what I can kind of tell about the world from being in these different positions at different points of time. Um, and so the video that I'm showing next door is talking about partly what, um, how people perceive me and how I am perceived, but how I don't fit into the stereotype that I kind of represent. And the way that I deal with it in this video is that I'm talking about gesture and how gesture can be, um, can be this kind of unexplainable difference between people that either brings us together or keeps us separate. And um, what I'm trying to do in the video is that I'm trying to do what I call an Indian head nod, but I can't do it, so I fail to repeat this uh, body gesture that people of part of my family do, but I can't adapt to it, which is partly because a certain lineage is broken. Um, so I'll show you a little bit. So in trying to do this movement, I'm trying to kind of fit into my own perceived identity, but I'm also trying to fit into my family and my um, kind of history that was partly broken. Um, it's an 11 minute video, um, and then I have subtitles along the movement. Um, the subtitles are written separate from the movement, so it's kind of um, a gap between the understanding of both. So I'm not trying to represent a movement that I'm tightening, um, but instead there's kind of an understanding that there's something, there's a gap between. So lacuna means untranslatable, so a word that exists in one language but not in another. Um, and so I'm trying to kind of explore what those gaps might mean. Um, so I made this work during my MA uh, in 2009, and I spent uh, three months in Paris during this time. Um, so the pictures in the same room as the video of the book was made at the same time. Um, and uh, my time in Paris was spent with an uncle who lives in Paris, who is also from Sri Lanka and his family. And what I was thinking about was um, that uh, during the time when I was in Paris there was a wedding of my cousin. 
and it meant that my father and all his siblings came together for the first time in 40 years. And so uh, my father left Sri Lanka in the 1960s. Uh, he left before the conflict started. My uncle, who lives in Paris, uh, left in the middle of the conflict. And then I have another uncle who left for the States about the same time. An uncle who stayed in the north of Sri Lanka and an auntie who stayed in Sri Lanka but moved down south. So the, kind of, the conflict meant that the family was dispersed. Uh, but because my father left at a very different time to the rest of the family, it means that he had a very different experience to the rest of the family. It also means that us as cousins don't share um, common history, we don't share common experience, and we don't often uh, even share language. So with my cousins in Paris, they speak French and Tamil, and I speak Swedish and English. Um, so um, what I was thinking about in Paris is like, what, what, what happens to the concept of family? in uh, this kind of globalized world where nations have their own narratives and the experience that people have of coming to these nations shape them. So, for example, with my uncle in Paris, he came to Paris and didn't have a very good reception in Paris. His children's education was di uh, disrupted, um, which obviously shaped their future experience in Europe. Uh, they live in clichy sur bois which is uh, a suburb in Paris, which doesn't have um, a very Parisian feel to it. It's where the car bombings were in 2005, and uh, car fires. Um, and my father, on the contrary, left in the 1960s. He went to study. He met my mother. He moved to Sweden, um, and has, in, a, in many ways, had a much easier life in Europe than his brother. His brother, uh, I would say, maybe holds on to certain Tamil traditions, possibly stronger than my uncle in Sri Lanka, because he's very nostalgic about certain parts they had to leave. So I was interested in how all these kind of conflicts of, of histories and experiences experience, um, are experienced in the family. One thing that was very important to me in this work was using, I started using text and started writing about these experiences. And in the book, if you have, if you have a chance to have a look at it, in the text, I never name he, I never name any names or who is who. Uh, it's always just he or she. And so I was interested in thinking about how our identities are so fluid and unfixed, and how one event or a series of events or decisions can change the course of our life and uh, identity um, and so I want to play with that in the text with not having fixed positions but you don't quite know who is saying what to who. So I can give, give you an example of the text. She went to Paris, spent time in a place she didn't know, the people she didn't know. Seduced by the city, its beautiful buildings and made up women, she started breathing again. Her red lipstick became her shield. She met the eyes of others in the street, long looks confirming her belonging, her existence. But when she was with them, she did not feel the same. She did not meet anyone's eyes. She did not think anyone met hers. She felt them visible, as if she could not be looked at, as if she was taboo. She stood further away from them and then closer, regretting her reactive body language. Her clothes made her stand out a proud posture out of place. She could see they were happy that she was with them. It made them feel guilty. It became easier to be angry at the passing people rather than facing her own guilt. So when making this work, um, one thing that I started thinking about quite a lot was uh, my own participation in representation and what I, what I contribute with in terms of how I represent others, including people in my family. Um, and so that's what I'm trying to get at in this text, that I'm kind of torn between positions and torn between wanting to be seen in a certain way in a dominant kind of Western society um, and belonging with my family. Um, and that brings
brings me to uh, a more recent work that I made that I showed in this gallery uh, in the beginning of the year, called Vikola Pula, which is a three-screen installation made in Sri Lanka uh, together with my aunt, uh, who I call Pula. So, background information for that is that I, because of the civil war in Sri Lanka, I didn't uh, travel to Sri Lanka until I was 17, so I had a broken relationship to the country. Um, and again, I don't have a common language with my aunt, and so we try to understand each other through body language or through other means, often cooking or dressing up, or kind of what I would normally consider very stereotypical female activities that I wouldn't normally want to represent, but which I actually uh, came to represent in this video. Let me show you the beginning of An image that goes beyond the images that I grew up with. In actresses, geography books, travel magazines. My uncle has offered that I can stay with him in his new modern house. I used the new toilet and shower. It's the first time anyone has used it. They still use the same toilet in the garden. The bathroom is for me and the other foreigners. They have AC in the guest room. But I stay with Pula. She reminds me of my father. Everyone thinks it's funny that I call her Pula, since it means little sister. But I'm just imitating what he called her. So in this piece, um, I return to the, the, the birthplace of my father, which I'd only visited once before and very um, briefly. Um, and I was interested in kind of revisiting a certain history that he told me about, but also a certain history that I had uh, a very kind of made up imagination about. And this imagination is partly coloured by my European upbringing, the history books and the atlases and the travel magazines that I talk about. Um, and so facing this exotic idea of my history. Um, so um, I might, maybe I should mention something about the civil war, but um, so the Tamil minority live in the north and the east of the island of Sri Lanka, um, and there's been an, a civil war since about the 1980s between the Tamil minority and the Sinhalese majority. And this conflict ended in a very controversial ending uh, in 2009. Um, and uh, my aunt, who then lived in the south of the island, was moving back north and lots of other Tamils were also returning to the north um, 20 or 30 years after they'd left. Um, and I was kind of, documenting partly her return to the place um, and then my idea of, of what it means to my history. Um, I was also interested in, because I've been working so much about my own exclusion from the Western discourse because of my history, I was interested in how I fitted into the picture in Sri Lanka. Um, and what I found from making the work, so this, this work was made during my PhD and I also wrote about it, was how I uh, perpetuate certain stereotypes in my own work and how I assume certain things about my own background and about my aunt because of my Western background. Um, and so um, I'm trying to kind of bring that into the work in the text, in the, in the words that I talk about it and how, how we represent others and how we try and kind of um, go a step further. So for example, um, I'm going to show you another clip of where I think that there are differences between me and my aunt that we can't understand about each other and I always take those as uh, their cultural differences 
but then realise that there are actually differences because of the different experiences that we've had rather than culture. So I'll show you, I'm very much coloured by the war, so I'll show you a clip. Uh, it's about that. It's late and I'm going to bed. I put on my Primark pyjamas, which I intend to throw away when I leave. Paula has hired them to get rid of the ants. She asked me why I sleep in them. I'm tired. I don't want to explain how or why I do certain things. I get annoyed and want to go into my bedroom and take a sip of gin from the bottle I've hidden in a paper bag. To kill the germs, I know if Paula finds it, she would think I'm alcoholic. I shrug, and instead of answering, I turn the question around. Why do you sleep on your home dress? You don't change. That's not very hygienic, is it? Paula thinks for a moment, but not long. In the war, she says, we were always prepared to run. If we had to run in the middle of the night, we did not want to run in the night count. So that's why. Now we're just used to it. It's become a habit. I'm not sure if you heard all of that, but yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of scrutinising my own uh, stereotypical ideas about my own family and how you try to kind of rethink representation and how you represent yourself and how you represent others and go against your own desires of how you want to be represented. Um, another piece that I was working on in my PhD is called The Tangled Web of Belonging. And this is the first uh, body of work where I bring in my mother into the picture and my belonging in terms of uh, with her in, in the, what I call the post-colonial West. And I was interested in what it is that creates a contradiction when me and my mother share the same frame. And so an example that I use in another uh, piece of work that I've made is that my mother, uh, when we were children, she was always asked by other people, like, you know, because obviously we don't share the same skin colour. Uh, she would be asked very personal questions by strangers. Like, so where's the father from? What does he work with? What do you work with? How did you meet? All these kind of, you know, not, not offensive questions, but still very personal. And now uh, she has grandchildren and they look white and none of those questions are asked. And so then you start thinking about how what we think of as European, what we think of as Swedish, what we think of as um, who we belong to and who's allowed to belong to who. Um, so in this recent body of work, I started thinking about um, what, what legacy we, we still think of as European, um, who's allowed to belong, who isn't, and what narratives do we um, tell ourselves. Um, and it's a very dispersed kind of collection of images that um, each title is named from a, from a concept in um, post-colonial theory of hybridity. Um, and then I take my inspiration from different sources. So for example, this image, which is a signet, um, I, I've been thinking about my favourite story as a child, which was The Ugly Duckling from H.C. Anderson, and thinking about how this swan that was growing up with ducks wasn't allowed to belong with the ducks until he found the other swans and then he found belonging and I was thinking about what does these stories mean that we keep telling ourselves that we can only belong if we look like others if we kind of if we are like others if we behave like others rather than trying to find belonging in differences um, and this is a, a, a thousand rupee note from Sri Lanka which um, depicts the Sinhalese army rising the Sri Lankan flag um, and I find that a very violent image on, a, on, a, on their money when they're still an island of, of different uh, ethnicities and minorities um, and I also find it an interesting kind of gesture of European colonialism that left behind um, MS And this uh, work is about to be published in a book called Eight Set of Conflict, which is nine different uh, Sri Lankan artists responding to kind of ideas of conflict. And my 
last night review. So I, I combine this a lot with nature and how we try to uh, restrict nature from growing the way that is natural to grow, but we try to kind of construct the way um, we are together as people, but also our natural habitat. <laughs>